Have you finished your novel but dread editing? It's okay. The editing phase scares a lot of people. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make editing quick and painless by breaking down how I edit my novels step by step. What's up guys, my name is Michael Aran with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. Now I create these writing videos because I believe that each of you has Stephen King level talent and you just need help unlocking it. If you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell to get helpful writing videos every week. And in this writing video, we're talking about the editing process. Now, maybe some of these tips will work for you and, and maybe they won't, but I found that editing can take away valuable time if you let it, primarily because it's tempting to do rewrites and revisions. <laughs> My process minimizes that temptation so that you can breeze through revision and get started on your next book. So let's say I just finished a novel and I'm ready to start editing. Step zero in my process is to write my story as good as I can the first time. I don't believe in sloppy first drafts or sloppy writing in general. Now I know this is hard for a lot of people to hear, but you'll save so much time in revision if you just take the time to get your story right the first time. If you encounter a plot hole while you're writing, fix the plot hole. By doing this, you're writing clean. Clean does not mean perfect or error free. It just means that your story is well formed and as complete as possible when you type the end. <laughs> Step one is to do passes through the manuscript. Now, I don't do this anymore because I'm able to do what I need to do most of the time with one draft, but I did follow this particular process for a long time before I was comfortable getting to that point. When most people think of doing passes through their manuscript, they think that they have to review everything every time. That's actually impossible. You can't hold all the different editing techniques in your head, and if you do this, it may feel like you're making progress one minute and then none the next. My advice is to break your passes into targeted reviews. For the first pass, I would only look at the narrative section and the action. Is there too much or too little description? Do the hero's internal thoughts make sense? That sort of thing. For the second pass, I would look at only dialogue. Is it clear? Does it make sense? Etc. And for the third pass, I would just simply skim the story to verify that I didn't miss anything. This is more of a quick glance than anything else. And then I would move on. Also, I would set a deadline for each phase, or each pass. Um, I'd only give myself a few days for each one. So once that deadline passed, I forced myself to move on. Scrivener is the writing app that I use, and I would use the revision mode to color code the edits that I made during each pass. If I were going to do this again today, I would definitely use the linguistic focus feature so that I could fade the dialogue in and out while I was editing for more focus. Remember the law of diminishing returns. I don't want people to hear this and then think that they need to do 100 passes on their manuscript. If you're going to do this, I recommend doing it no more than three times with a targeted focus each time. Set a deadline and then follow it. Step three is to edit according to my internal style guide. I've worked with a lot of editors over the years, and I know what my quirks are. For example, I sometimes miss commas, or I misspell character names throughout the book, and so I need to make sure I keep track of that. So I've got a checklist of things that I can easily find with find and replace. For example, if I have a handful of proper nouns, I'll do a find all for each of those so that I can verify that each instance is spelled consistently. I also tend to overuse words like smile and frown, so I'll find each instance of those and eliminate as many of those as I can. My style guide is for my own use so that I can make sure that I'm providing a clean manuscript to my editor. You can develop your own style guide very easily when you receive edits from your editor. If you find an error more than twice, mark it down on your guide. Then, when you're working on your next book, you can keep a mental note to pay attention to that problem in real time while you're writing so you can fix it in real time. Then, when you apply your style guide, you just have to catch any issues that may have slipped through the cracks. For bonus points, you can provide a copy of your style guide to your editor. Step four is to use proofreading tools. For me, these are the last line of defense. I'll start with Microsoft Word spell check, and I'll usually disregard about 99% of the recommendations, but I always catch at least two to three typos, which makes it worth it for me. And it only takes 10 to 15 minutes to run through my whole manuscript. After that, I use Pro Writing Aid to catch more fiction specific errors. A number of features in Pro Writing Aid are quite good and have a pretty high accuracy rate, so I highly recommend it. For more info on Pro Writing Aid and the particular features that I use, check out my Pro Writing Aid review video. Step 5 is beta readers. I give them targeted direction on what I want them to focus on. This is optional, but if you do decide to take beta readers, just make sure that you set some deadlines. If you can, pay them for their time to help make sure that they help you out. 
Step six is copy editing. My editor does a line by line edit, and for me, this is where the novel starts to feel like a novel. After copy editing, I hire a separate proofreader just to catch any typos that might have been introduced during editing. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't talk about developmental editing. See my video on that. Now I found that the key to working with editors is to be open and honest and, and communicate about what you're thinking and, and what you want. Also remember that you don't have to accept something if you don't agree. At the end of the day, it's your story and only you know truly what's best for it. So don't let anybody tell you that you, you have to accept everything an editor recommends. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. A great book I'd recommend for learning how editors think is the McGraw-Hill Desk Reference for Editors. I'll drop a link to it in the video description. Step seven is cleanup. I'll go back through my manuscript with Microsoft Word just to catch any uh, typos, as well as run the first couple of chapters through Pro Writing Aid for good measure. That's my process, and I wanted to let you guys know that this book is sponsored by my book, How to Write Your First Novel. It's the stress-free guide to writing fiction for beginners, and there's an entire section on editing and revision. So if you want to go deeper into the stuff I talk about in this video, be sure to grab your copy. And I also put together a playlist called How to Edit a Novel that covers all things editing. So check that out in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.